Hey everyone, welcome to another Angry Artist Podcast. Now let's talk about something more technical. Let's talk about how do you approach anatomy. In the previous podcast, I talked about using geometric shapes in order to simplify the world of complex shapes. This will allow the artist to be able to draw it on canvas. Without understanding the underlying structure, you'll probably end up having a lot of complex articulations and um, line deviations, but they won't really have the greater whole completed, if that makes sense. So for instance, if you're drawing a book, but you don't understand the rectangular prism that makes up a book, then you might get into the habit of breaking perspective when you draw the, the object. Now, let's take it a little bit further. So how do we take that into a realm where most people would go to? So character design, environment design, that sort of thing. But I'll talk about anatomy for this one. So if you opened up an anatomy book, you'll probably have a very daunting task ahead of you. There's so many muscles, so many bones in our body, so many functions in our body that we end up having so much information put on us. I'm sure you've had a lot of tutorials where they simplify it into shapes, but many art schools will tell you you should learn the bones, you should learn each individual muscle in order to draw the human body. And that's actually great advice. Even though we could simplify the human body into geometric shapes, the artist may end up with a bad habit where they simplify a little bit too much. The best way to understand human bodies is really to understand all facets of it. So for instance, you want to understand the geometric simplifications, but you also want to understand the advanced muscles, the advanced bones. You may get caught into making something too simple and the body no longer looks like a human body. It looks like something from Nintendo 64. For the people who didn't live in the 90s, yo, Nintendo 64 3D models were very blocky because of technological limitations. Geometric shapes are very helpful when it comes to perspective and volume and making sure that it looks three-dimensional. But you need to take that a step further. You just don't want to draw a cube for a torso or a cube for a head. Our bodies are a lot more complex than that. So this begs the question, how do they work together? So I'm sure if you've seen other tutorials, they talk about, okay, put a circle for the head, put a circle for the torso, put a few circles for the legs and such. That's actually a good starting point. However, you need to be able to build on top of it. That's where the advanced anatomy comes in. Every person's style is different. The amount you simplify is very telling of what your preferences are. Going back to something like anime or cartoons, they're most likely not going to draw every single muscle on the arm or the torso. It's generally simplified in a very appealing shape. So in the end, it's about middle ground. You want to have that geometric foundation, but you also want to build on top of it. And whichever muscles you want to put down is entirely up to you and depends on the subject matter. So if you're drawing a mu very, very muscular character, you'll probably need a lot more information than if you were to draw something like a very young girl, for instance. Now, the amount you simplify and the amount you take out is entirely on your preferences. But no matter how much you simplify, how much you prefer to be on the body, your sense of simplification has to be derived from your knowledge of advanced anatomy. Take that into heart. That's actually very important and one of the 
biggest things people get caught doing. They make the mistake that, oh, I don't need to know all these muscles because I'm drawing cartoons, therefore I'm not going to study anatomy. I repeat, every single thing you simplify has to have a realistic reason. So if you don't understand the muscles of the arm and you try to simplify at the lack of knowledge of the muscles of the arm, then you end up with a simplification that isn't realistic. You might notice that a lot of cartoons and uh, other simplified styles like anime, no matter how little they render. So I'm sure you'll no, not every character is going to have every bulging muscle. No matter how little they show, the information that they show is right and structurally sound. Now, of course, that's barring really poorly drawn types of artwork, but let's assume that we're talking about the highest ends of things. It's similar to the idea that if you don't really understand anatomy, when you draw clothing on top of it, there is, it's probably not going to be very convincing. Your foundations have to be there, and then you build on the foundations. This is why it's incredibly important to learn your bones. If you don't understand the skeleton, you don't know where the muscles will be attached to. Every muscle is attached to a bone. Now, there might be a few, I, I don't know, I don't even remember every single muscle on the body, so maybe there are some that are floating, maybe not, I don't know. But generally speaking, the biggest muscle groups are going to be attached to bones. So if you get the bones wrong, then you get the muscles wrong, and then you get the costuming wrong. Which also means your, your geometric shapes were wrong. So it's a chain reaction. If you have the ability to understand this in steps, your ability to draw human beings will be incredibly improved. Again, it's very daunting. I understand this when you open up an anatomy book and you don't know where to start. So just think about it this way. Start with the bones, the skeleton. Then think of ways to simplify the skeleton with geometric shapes. Once you really get it down, then you start learning the muscles. And then you start simplifying them with geometric shapes. In your own preferences, of course. There's really no right or wrong answer as long as it looks like a convincing human being. And there are so many ways of doing that. And that's entirely up to you to decide. Anyways, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.